What's going on guys? Avery here bringing you guys a brand new video. I'm wanting to talk to you today about the road to YCS Atlanta episode 2. So if you guys are enjoying this series please be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new and be sure to hit that little ding dong bell. Hashtag notification squad. God, that was a cringe. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead and hit that bell for me so that you guys are always notified about my brand new uploads. I'll be sure to let you guys know the beginning and the end of the video. But without any further ado, let's get into episode two of Road to YCS Atlanta. Now again, this series is for you guys who want to be involved in the competitive scene. And also for those of you who are going to YCS Atlanta or are asking, Avery, what do I have to do to be good at Atlanta? Well, I'm going to tell you what you have to do to be good at Atlanta. You play Zoo! <laughs> But, no, we, we already talked about the deck types last episode. This episode, we're going to also be talking about the decks, but we're going to be focusing more on just the side deck. Now, you're probably wondering, well, Avery, why are you focusing on the side deck? I mean, shouldn't that come with building a deck? Yes, but some people don't really know how to side. Some people don't really know how to make a side deck, per se. So this is kind of a way to give you guys tips and tricks on you know, good ways to make a side, um, how to decide what you're going to put in your side deck, because your side deck, at the end of the day, it's 15 cards, it's very small, it's very crucial, just like your extra deck. However, it's even more crucial than your extra deck, because of the fact that this is going to give you access to beating your toughest matchups. I know for me, when I went to Locals uh, last week, and I was testing my uh, Kaiju Zodiac build without D-Barriers, so it was kind of ghetto, but... Um, my side deck was very, what I also called ghetto-ish, just because of the fact that, you know, I didn't have everything I need. Like, it wasn't um, this side deck here. Now, this side deck is from, and main deck is from YCS Seattle first place, uh, Alexis Rodriguez, I believe his name was. Um, and this is kind of a way that I also test decks as well. Not only will I test the main deck by just, you know, doing single games on Dev Pro or Dueling Book, whatever you prefer, but I will also copy their side deck when I'm ready to do match duels when I feel comfortable enough with the deck. Now you're probably wondering, well, why is this? Are you a net decker? Partially, yes, and I'm not afraid to admit that. <laughs> but the way I net deck is that I'll take a person's deck card for card and I'll test it. Then I'll make changes accordingly depending on my play style. For example, Lullaby of Obedience. I get that Lullaby of Obedience is a good card. However, I don't really want to have to pay 2,000 life points when I'm already playing two Solemn Strikes and a Solemn Warning. And, I mean, that right there is 5,000. This right here is 7,000. I mean, only one Lullaby of Obedience is going to be live unless your opponent plays, like, a lot of life point gain cards. I understand that it's good also in the fact that it's good in the mirror match because you can activate Lullaby of Obedience on an opposing uh, Zodiac player and take the rat, and you're essentially playing four... Um, Zodiac Rat Pierre's in your deck. But, uh, once again, it's not really my play style, so it's not really something I would feel comfortable side decking with. However, on the other hand, Artifact, Lancia, and Imperial Iron Wall, I very much don't mind siding because, number one, it's a generic side deck card um, that is good against majority of things that rely on banishing, not just Infernoid, but any other deck that relies on banishing cards. You know, let's say, for example, Zombies with Shunrai, they want to banish their cards out of the graveyard so that they make a Synchro Summon. You throw in three Lancias and a couple of Imperial Iron Walls, and you're good to go. Um, it's just one of those cards that is very generic in the sense that it covers a decent amount of ground. Not a lot of ground, because if it were to cover a lot of ground, it would have to be something generic like, say, Raigeki or Dark Hole. Lullaby of Obedience, however, is not as generic because of the fact that it pretty much is only good in one matchup, and that's your Zodiac matchup, and it's only good for, you know, games two. Um, however, you know, games two and three, yes, you could still side at Lullaby of Obedience, but your opponent might go into game three, depending on what happens game one and two. Uh, knowing that you're playing Lullaby of Obedience and might side deck stuff in to play around it, or to even stop Lullaby of Obedience itself. Um, in regards to other cards such as Backward Destruction and Backward Hate like Starlight Road, Twin Twisters, and Cosmic Cyclone, is all player preference. And that's what the entire side deck as a whole is supposed to be, is player preference. You know, as I just mentioned, I don't really like playing Love of Bio Obedience. I might play something else. Uh, you might like Cosmic Cyclone. I personally prefer Twin Twisters, and I also prefer Twin Twisters in the main deck. That's why I don't really like playing the Instant Fusion build of Zodiac. Once again, that is all player preference. It's not something that you can really hate a person for or give them flack for because it's how they play the game in Yu-Gi-Oh. 
Now, when it comes to constructing your side deck, you need to consider all of your matchups in mind, and this is a perfect example. Alexis Rodriguez went into the event knowing he was going to be playing against that Grass Looks Green or Infernoids, so he threw in three Lances and three Imperial Iron Walls because he really wanted to stop that matchup because it is a very tough matchup for Zoo if that deck is able to go first because they can just set up their board, and if they set up Fairy Tale Snow, they can just stop all your plays, and it's just GG No Re. He also had the two Cosmic Cyclones and the two Twin Twisters for extreme back row hate, and then three Starlight Roads and a Star Dragon in the extra deck to stop any sort of Kaiju Slumbers, Dark Holes, Twin Twisters, you name it. So, what it then comes down to, for me personally, after analyzing uh, multiple Zodiac player side decks, because that's the deck I'm, I'm going to be playing, is Zodiac at my regional in April, I then kind of take all of my other matchups into consideration and make sure that my side deck can cover as much ground as it humanly possibly can with its 15 cards. Now you have to keep in mind that at YCS Seattle, uh, Wind Witch Invoker, uh, Dot Deck, whatever, those things were not a thing because Fusion Enforcers were not out. When I go to my regional in April, however, and when you all go to YCS Atlanta, Fusion Enforcers will be legal. So, you know, something like... Starlight Road may not be as good. Maybe you'll want to side deck something in to stop, you know, Wind Witches and Invokers specifically. Um, good examples of that would be, uh, well, they like to fusion summon, so um, anything that you used against Shadals to stop their fusion summoning is good. I wouldn't really suggest non-fusion area because the Invoke deck doesn't rely too much on fusion summoning. Um, but if you don't want to play Dimensional Berries in the main for whatever reason, you could throw them in your side deck and then game two throw all three in and call, you know, Synchros, Exceeds, whatever that you need to call against the Invoker uh, Win Witch deck. Uh, Synchros to stop their Crystal Wing fusion, of course, to stop the Mechaba. Anything that you can do to slow the deck down. Now, if I had to go into YCS Atlanta with this side deck, I mean, I would. Um, I think that there, again, I think that there's still a couple changes that I would make to it, such as the Lullaby of Obedience and somehow get the Twin Twisters into the main deck. Um, I've never been a fan of Starlight Road. Um, I've actually been kind of leaning towards Dark Bribe just because it's a generic um, stopping card, and it's also a counter trap. Yes, your opponent gets a draw card, but... I mean, if you stop them with something like a Starlight Road, aren't you winning anyway? If you stop them with a Dark Bribe, aren't you winning anyway? <laughs> so, that's about all I have for you guys. Uh, I know this kind of seems like a generic-ish video, but I really wanted to talk about the side deck and just kind of talk about my mindset behind uh, building a side deck whenever I go to an event, because this is pretty much my internal thinking that I think about when creating a side deck. I, you know, look at the deck list on TCG Player or on YouTube. I look at their side decks because pretty much all zoo decks are just about the same, give or take a few cards here and there. And I just look at what their mindset was behind it. Um, some people might say Starlight Road's terrible, I prefer this, or Lullaby of Beans is terrible, I prefer this. Um, it all comes down to player preference, but the main point that I want to drive home to you guys is that you want your side deck to cover as much ground as possible, especially going into a two-day long event. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like. As I said at the beginning of the video, please be sure to ding-dong that bell uh, before you head on out to another person's YouTube channel because uh, that notifies you every time I upload. And if I'm uploading two or three videos a day with live streams, Plus, my Nintendo Switch unboxing is coming soon, even though the UK Game Store canceled my pre-order. I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> but, just be sure to hit that bell before you all head out. Thank you guys for watching, as always, and subscribe, if you, if you have not already. God, I messed up my outro.